This episode, we're going back to 2022 and sheer hill climbing, sheer Surrey, another pedal box road trip. Sheer Hill Climb is held on Staple Lane just off the A246 in Surrey, a public road which is closed for the day's running, with the adjacent fields in the farms used for both the show and the car park. And speaking of, it's always worth checking out the car park as you walk into a show. This 3.5 litre Rover Coupe was just next to us as we parked, and I'd never seen the Coupe version before. Fairly tastefully modified outside on bag suspension with some oversized steelies, it looked superb with the aircraft inspired bucket seats front and back inside. A few cars further down from the Rover, there's a Ford Galaxy 500, a BMW 850ci next to a classic Merc 280ce, an early Series 1 Lotus Elise 111S, and finally a TVR Chimera parked next to a very early Lotus Esprit. That's only one row of the car park. Seeing this 1934 MGTA ready to go up the hill is great, but it's parked up right behind this V12 Vantage. And that raises some eyebrows as to what the competition is here, but frankly Sheer isn't a competitive event. It's a fun day out where you happen to blast what you've brought up the hill through the hedgerows on what was yesterday a public road and will be again tomorrow. The fields are full of a wide variety of entrants, as is the line up to the start of the course. I was particularly pleased to see this rough 930 Turbo from 1984. For those of you who think that the original 911 Turbo Widowmaker wasn't quite Widowmakery enough, these aren't exactly commonplace at shows at the best of times, but seeing one intent to go up the hill was great. New Alpines are extremely good looking cars, really emulating the look of the original A110 from the 60s and 70s, but with more modern proportions. I think it's been done very, very well, and it's one of the better retro inspired visions that's made it onto the road, but you don't see many. In fact, I hadn't seen any of them until I saw these two finished in slightly different blues at Shear. Few people seem to remember when Saab made a two seat sports coupe, the Sonnet. Unsurprising as it wasn't that popular. This version, starting in 1970, sold just over 8,000 units. This Chrysler Valiant was never available in the US, instead they seem to just get the Duster and the Dart as two-door options in this size. This one's unusual as it has the Thermoquad 4-barrel instead of the 2-barrel from the factory. Felice Nazaro built cars for what would become Fiat before founding his own company in 1911. The Tipo 2 topped out at 100 km an hour and Nazaro himself won the 1913 Targa Florio in just over 19 hours driving 979 km in this. You can go years without seeing a Bentley 4.5 litre, they're not that common, and then suddenly there's two sat next to each other. The 4.5 is one of the first cars to use an overhead cam with a pair of SU carbs. And as if this weren't enough, its successor, the 6.5, is parked just a couple of cars down. 
They all have similar Wyman type canvas bodies, but they're quite heavy cars weighing well over one and a half tons. But with plenty of power for the time, and the racing versions had even more, they were still extremely fast for their day. This crit speedster is no one-off, but it's also not exactly factory. Originally, these were fitted with a four-cylinder engine, and at some point, somebody decided to start swapping in Curtis Aero engine. I found more than one example of this exact combination with the OX5 V8 shoehorned in where that four-cylinder used to be. It's got a beefy chain drive, and I can't imagine anyone has ever been brave enough to see what the full performance this is and remember to document it afterwards. And not far away from the crit is The Car, from the film of the same name. Based on a Lincoln Continental Mark III, it has all of the same stock running gear. It's been substantially altered by George Barris, who also did the 1966 Batmobile and the Dragula from the Monsters, among many, many others. They made three stunt cars, all of which were destroyed making the film, and the one hero car survives, although there are many replicas. It's difficult to prove the provenance, but this one had a lot of things backing it up, but short of checking the VINs, which I didn't do, it's probably hard to be completely sure. Around the corner are a pair of gems from 1960, a Triumph Italia and this Turner Sports Mark I, fitted with the higher performing Coventry Climax FWE instead of the 948cc Austin engine, upping the power from 45 to 71 horse. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already, hit the little notification bell so you get notified when we put out more videos, and let us know in the comments what you think was the best car here today. You can become a supporter on patreon.com forward slash pedalbox show, and you can pick up some of our merch at shop.pedalbox.show. Thanks very much for watching, we'll see you next time.